Hi, this is uh, John again with uh, PDF Tax. Um, we're working with uh, Schedule C today. Um, we're going to try to give you an idea how this form works. This is the form that you would use that you would attach to your individual income tax return 1040 if you had a business and you were a sole proprietor. In other words, you were working, um, you were the owner and you're working by yourself. You don't have any partners and you didn't incorporate your business in any way. So you would uh, fill this form out and attach it to your Schedule C, uh, your, your Form 1040 to show your profit or loss for the year. So um, let's just uh, start out by filling in some basic information here. Just take me a few minutes here to do this. And we're going to um, say that this, uh, that Jeff Jones has a uh, manufacturing business where he uh, creates uh, leather handbags. So, that and his business name is Leatherworks like that um, now we need to come up with a business code and um, to do that we're gonna go to the instructions for Schedule C which has the business code so if we go down here and we look under leather and allied products the code we want is 316990. So we'll go back up here and enter 316990 like that. Oops, 990. Um, and the business address is, I don't know, some address. Um, we don't need an employer ID necessarily um, unless uh, he applied for one. Um, you can just use your social security number if you don't have an employer ID. Um, now we need to find and we need to decide what the accounting method is and we're going to say that this business has uh, inventory so we'll need to use the accrual method which is that right there. And then, did you materially participate? Um, and what, in other words, did you um, spend your time working in this business? And uh, Jeff certainly did, because that's his, it's his 100% uh, business, and that's what he does full time. So we're gonna say yes here. Um, did you start in 217? No. Um, did you make payments that would require filing 1099? Uh, he probably did because he made payments to uh, purchase inventory. So we'll say yes. And did you file them? And we'll say yes again. Um, so that um, is the big basic information right there. Now let's go ahead and um, enter some numbers so we can see how this form works. And on line one, we need to put our um, sales. So we'll suppose that he had a hundred and fifty thousand dollars in sales for the year and then um, uh, he didn't necessarily have any returns he might have but we'll leave that blank um, and cost of goods sold is um, the next big thing that we need to look at so that's that comes from line 42 so let's scroll down here to line 42 this section here where we have cost of goods sold and um, first thing we need to do is um, um, decide what method of inventory we use for valuing an inventory and probably he's going to use the cost method which is the most common and was there any change in, in the cost in valuing the inventory and we'll say no there was no change so um, the inventory at the beginning of the year these would be um, 
the, um, the leather that he uses to make his handbags. So um, let's say he had $5,000 in inventory at the beginning of the year. And then how much did he purchase um, during the year to make the handbags? And so let's say there was $30,000 there. And the cost of labor, um, he has some employees that were helping him. So maybe he paid them $40,000, something like that. And then um, didn't have any of these other costs. So um, the total here is 75000 But then he had inventory at the end of the year of, let's say, 12000 So his cost of goods sold comes at 63000 like that. And that is going to carry back here to this line. Um, so his gross income here uh, works out to $87,000. Now let's talk about his expenses. Um, in part two here, um, you can see there's about 20 lines there for different types of expenses. And uh, so he would enter, you know, whatever he has. He might have had um, $10,000 in uh, advertising. Um, and I'm not going to spend time on each item, but I do want to take a look at depreciation. Um, let's, let's suppose that he bought a, uh, a uh, leather tanning machine this year for $40,000. And um, how does that affect this Schedule C? So in order to figure that out, we're going to go down to this uh, depreciation schedule here where, where, where you would enter your depreciation. Um, and uh, there's several different op options here. Um, but maybe the best one is uh, this line 14 special depreciation allowance that allows you to write off 100% um, of the cost of your um, whatever you bought if, if it qualifies uh, and if you bought it after um, after September 27th 2017 you can get 100% um, depreciation allowance so if he decides to do that he would enter 40,000 right there like that and then the total would go down here to line 22 um, and then back up here it comes back as on line 13 as 40,000 so his um, his total expenses right now are 50 and his uh, profit is 37 which is the 87 minus the 50 so you can see that right there on line 31 um, that's the way that works right now now let's um, make a different assumption about how, how he wants to handle the depreciation. So if he writes off the whole thing uh, this year, obviously he's not going to have anything to write off in the next year or the next several years. And maybe he wants to do that. He doesn't want to take the um, full deduction this year. He wants to save some for uh, in the next few years. So um, let's go back down to uh, the 4562 and we'll change what we're doing here a little bit take that out of there and if he wants to just depreciate his uh, asset um, he would use this section here um, so um, the asset that he has is a f is a seven-year property so he would put 40,000 right there and if he bought it in the last quarter of 2017 he would be using the mid-quarter convention um, like that so he would be getting um, $1,428 of depreciation this year, uh, which isn't very much, but then he'd have um, a lot left over for the next several years. So on line 22, we get 1428. And again, that is going to carry back um, to line 13. So now his um, profit is a lot more, 75572 now he just has one question here left to deal with um is all this investment at risk and uh in other words did, did he make any loans that he wasn't responsible for and uh, no he didn't do that so his advancement it, it's all at risk just like that so there's the um bottom line of what he would uh put on his 1040 um a profit of 75 572. so that um completes our discussion of uh Schedule C. So um, thanks for listening.